watching One Lisa Show. And today is just a quick sewing chat catch up. Nothing else. I have missed a couple of Friday sews just because I've been terribly busy and I also lost my sojo. I've got a couple of projects to share, but for the most part, I did lose my sojo for a little bit and it's been rough go of getting it back in the swing of things. I've been a little sidetracked with work, career life, and home life. Uh, but today I'm coming to you from my home office slash guest bedroom. This bookcase should look familiar. I have done videos in the past in front of it. And today I'm in front of it just because we have better lighting in this room. And our ring light is a uh, double duty. It is in our dining room on our table where we are putting together a puzzle. My boyfriend and I are big puzzle people. We both enjoy puzzles. Did not know this about each other when we met, but we do like puzzles. And I had ordered a bunch of puzzles uh, from Buffalo Games. Uh, about a month ago and we're on our second puzzle. If you do like jigsaw puzzles, Buffalo Games has a lot of puzzles to choose from. They're really good puzzles. They click together very well. There's not too much like paper dust. They're all different topics, all different levels, 300 piece, 750 piece, 1000, 2000 but they usually have a great selection that's discounted. And I think the discounts in the US, I think it's around like 4.95 is some of them are marked down to. So that's practically like for me, half price of what I would buy a puzzle for on Amazon or at the local like Target or somewhere like that. So I do like to go on their website once in a while and I buy a whole bunch of puzzles and then it feels like Christmas morning and we get to choose what puzzle we wanna do. We work on it together on our dining room table and that's where the ring light goes because we get really good lighting on those pieces. I am wearing today a DIBY Club t-shirt. I color blocked it myself. The instructions did not have the color blocking. And I added little tiny cuffs of the contrasting color. This was my So Frugal 22 challenge piece that I made. And it was made with two scraps that I had from Girl Charlie. A, like a light pink and a fuchsia colored and it turned out really good. I've already gotten a stain on it because I wore this <laughs> I wore this to my parents house one day for dinner and got a stain on it but I still love it even with the stain. If you are new to watching my channel I've had a lot of new subscribers so welcome aboard. It's great to have you with and I want to give a great shout out to Liz from The Baker That Sews who mentioned me in one of her recent sew Sunday sewing catch-up videos. I adore Liz. I've been watching her for um, pretty much as long as I've been sewing this past round go of things. I started sewing, well I learned to sew when I was a child. I sewed when I was a teenager, not as much as I sew now, but during COVID like many other people I started making masks because I had a sewing machine in my basement just collecting dust that I purchased for like $60 just so I could mend things and fix things, hem things if I needed. And I wasn't doing anything with it. So I started making some masks and watching lots of YouTube videos. And some of the people that really influenced me uh, were Liz, the baker that sews, also Sewing Bunny, Michelle, Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door, uh, the Yorkshire Sew Girl was another one, and of course, Pattern Pals, which they don't make videos anymore, but that was probably the big one that catapulted me to try something. And uh, I'd find a pattern and I would research it and see what videos came up. So I felt more confident when I tried to make something. And that's how I started my channel, is I started getting involved in this community, this worldwide sewing circle. Welcome aboard. Today I'm going to go over just a couple of things that I have been make that I have worked on in the past two weeks. Again, I had lost my sojo, so something I like to do every day when I'm done working between work and dinner is a little sewing, whether it's cutting something out, doing a couple of steps of a sewing project, or having an afternoon to myself to just zone out. 
I like to sew a little bit every day, but the past couple of weeks I wasn't. And I'm really trying to get more motivated and back into it. And it's just like working out the moment you stop, a couple of days progress, it's a snowball effect. Just like when you do exercise regularly or sew regularly, it becomes like a habit. And so I kind of fell out of the habit, but I have a really cool project coming up with Adam Sews. And in order for me to do my best with this project, I need to get this Sojo back on the game. I wanna share with you something I did two weeks ago that I was really proud of and then just was too busy to post a video about it. But I am going to show you because I'm so proud of it and I can't wait. Maybe that's where some of my Sojo loss has been is that I have to move on to the next step of this project. And um, it's a little daunting. It's a little daunting, but I'm taking a lot of notes watching some videos, but I just haven't pushed the needle. A couple of months ago, I had purchased a jelly roll from a local quilt shop. This was my first time in a quilt shop. And it was the Summer Breeze by Moda Jelly Roll. And I think my last, one of my last videos I posted, I really wanted to work on a jelly roll race quilt. This is something I saw on Missouri Star Quilt Company YouTube channel. And it was an easy way to be like an introduction to quilting. And it's a jelly roll race quilt. And basically you sew all those strips together. Fold them up, sew them together, fold it up, sew them together. And the best part is when you're done, you're, you should have something that should work for a twin size bed. And here is mine. So I did get my front done. All the stripes sewn together randomly and I did press it but it will look like this I think mine is going to lay with the horizontal in a horizontal fashion I posted a couple of pictures on Instagram but the lighting wasn't the best and again this is basically the size will fit a twin bed so I'm really proud of it it's different it's unique all of them go together now here's the daunting next step i need to put a border on this and get my batting and get my backing and then quilt this i've decided i want to try to hand quilt it <sighs> but i think that's it i have i don't know where to begin other than the next step is to add my border fabric. So I am going to get one of these gorgeous prints I want to get just for my border. I've calculated how much of it I need to do like a four or a six inch border around this wonderful quilt top. I also have to pick out my backing fabric. So too many options. Too many options. I just need to take my time. There is plenty of these paisleys available on some of the websites that sell this Moda print still. This was from 2021, I guess, the Summer Breeze Jelly Roll. So there's not too much to choose from, but I do love this print especially. I think the backing, I'm just gonna do a solid color, but I want it to be the same a Moda fabric because I do love the feel of this quilting cotton. So that's what I've been up to. <laughs> that's one of the things I've been up to. I'm really proud of it. I really love how it looks. I don't want to ruin it with the next steps because this is a complete learning process. This is my first quilt. Um, but like I said, I love it. I love the feel of this fabric, very soft. And I'm going to get a very thin batting because I want it to be something I can use in the summer. And someone like me who deals with hot flashes on a regular basis. Um, I get very hot at night. I get very cold at night. Hot at night, cold at night. So I want this to just be an additional throw. Or if I choose to take a nap in the middle of the day or I'm hanging out on the couch in the living room, this would be perfect size for one person to just snuggle up with. There we go. It's something I made yesterday in an effort to get my sojo back. It's very simple. It is a pattern I kind of want to just try out, but it is an easy pattern. This is Simplicity 
S9127. It is pajama pants for all. And what I did is I made a pair of shorts for my nieces. They are eight and 10. I'm really interested in trying a pair of these for my boyfriend, Big Daddy. Uh, so that's why I bought this pattern. But I thought just to try making it, I wanted to try something easy. And my nieces need shorts for summer. I know it's called pajama shorts, but an elastic waist short is an elastic waist short. And I am someone that will make myself elastic waist shorts. And if they're pajama pants or not, if I decide to wear them out to the store and they don't look like pajama pants, they could be just shorts. So I took, this is actually my second pair that I've made. I made one pair out of some scrap fabric and they liked it, but they wanted a drawstring and they wanted pockets. Since this pattern does not include pockets, I made some patch pockets and I made a pair right here of some shorts for my nieces. This is like an embroidered seersucker and if you look carefully, you should be able to see some embroidered flowers on this gingham fabric, but it feels more like a seersucker. And it does have the elastic waist. I added a pink twill tape for a drawstring and I did, just made some patch pockets and attached them and there we have, and then the little label because it's going to my nieces. So it gets the label saying, I love them. And voila. So this is the second pair, very easy. I enjoyed it. I think they're really cute. I don't know if they'll like them, but I definitely do. So this was my project yesterday to try to get my Sojo back. And I think I succeeded because after I was done, I went through my fabric stash and thought, Lisa, you need a new spring dress. Oh, and by the way, the last two weeks have been cloudy, rainy, cold, damp, you name it, it's been it. Today it's nice and warm, yesterday was nice and warm, and a little sun yesterday, today we've had a good amount of sun. So it all makes sense that I was kind of down in the dumps, but I went through my stash. I found some fabric. And I have a pattern and to try a tried and true pattern that I do love, but I have yet to make the dress version. It is time for a spring dress and I picked Tilly and the Buttons Coco dress. I have made the top many, many times. I attempted to make the dress once last summer, I think, and it was a massive fail. It was a very thin knit. It felt like, it felt like a, a bag on me. I realized it was too loose of a knit, too stretchy. It was too thin. So I'm gonna attempt it again. I'm actually gonna size down. Last time I made a size six, I traced it out and I still have that pattern, but I think I'm gonna size down to the size five so there's a little less ease. And the fabric I'm hoping to get in, get enough into it, because I don't know how much of this I have, but in my mind, there should be enough. This is a gorgeous double brushed poly from Joann's that I have not been able to find again. Every time I've gone to Joann's lately, I have been looking for more of this because I do know my nieces loved it when they saw it originally, so I never used it. I should have bought more and I didn't. And I have a feeling I have maybe a yard and a half of this. But it is nice, I feel it's springy, retro looking, which I think the cut will be perfect. So I'm gonna try to make myself a Tilly in the Buttons Coco dress. If I can't fit the dress in, it will just be the top because it looks so nice and it is a bit of a thicker, less stretchy compared to the, the knit fabric I had last summer that I tried that dress. And I'm gonna size down, so it might be a little more form fitting. I love all these colors. It seems like an adult coloring book. I, I, I just, that's what I see when I look at this. I love the little pops of indigo. I love the turquoise, the lavender. I love the drawing and color in the background right here. But I, otherwise, the white background and the black drawing lines 
I just, it's cool. I think it's cool. So I'm excited about that. So I'm working my way to getting the Sojo back, especially because I have a project coming up with Adam from Adam Sews. If you don't know Adam, go to his YouTube page, go to his Instagram. He has a couple of adorable dogs, Luna and Dobby, and then another dog as well. And he sews a lot, and I know he's been very busy as well. Um, but we do have a project coming up that I can't wait to share more about. So that was just a quick, hi, happy Monday all. <laughs> oh, and then um, on my, that was my chair. On my life front, I am going to share with you guys some personal things in the near future. I am working on participating in something that's near and dear to my heart, and that is a, a 5K run, 3K walk, one or the other, and it is for the Leukemia Research Foundation here in the States. I have participated in this. It's called the Gibbons 5K. I have participated in the past as a survivor, and again, I'm going to participate in it virtually this year, and I think anybody can sign up to participate virtually. It is held in Chicago on June 16th. It's a Thursday evening in Grant Park. Because I don't know if I will be near there, I'm going to do it virtually. If I can make it, I can always come in person because I am a survivor. But more than likely, I'll probably have to do it locally, maybe the day before, <laughs> uh, by me. The Leukemia Research Foundation, and I'm going to give another video about this, and there's no pressure whatsoever, but I am raising money for them with this walk. And I'll put the link below in the description box in case anybody feels the need to, Penny might bark here. I see a car coming out of a driveway. Do I know her or what? Might get one or two more. Um. If anyone feels the need and there's no pressure and I'm not asking, but if you did feel that you wanted to donate towards the Leukemia Research Foundation, they're a fabulous nonprofit. Their money goes to two things, two important things I find. Direct support to the two patients affected by blood cancer within a, a radius of their office. I was a participant, I was a recipient of that financial assistance, so I can tell you firsthand, yes, they did help me pay bills when I needed it most. And number two, they fund research grants every year that are meant to help find cures, are meant to help treat blood cancers and blood disorders. And the best part is if you've never had anybody, which I'm someone that has I'm here, I had blood cancer. If you've never met anybody that's had blood cancer or nobody that you know that's been affected by it, some of that research, those research grants, if they can't help one cancer, they may be able to help another. So research to me is research. Whether you're researching for lung cancer, blood cancer, ovarian cancer, stomach cancer, brain cancer, what might work for one one treatment might not work for another, vice versa. So it all helps the greater good in my mind. I know this, I have been a speaker for them. Uh, when they did give out the research grants for, for the year, I was able to be a speaker on behalf and um, went to that reception and got to meet firsthand some of the doctors, some of the, the researchers and what they wanna do. So, long story short, I think they're, they're tops in my book. They helped me through a very difficult time. I had a rare form of leukemia. I lived in a hospital. I will share that story with you. I am in remission. I am healthy. Look, it still tears me up. Uh, but I am blessed to be wake up every morning. And I can't stress that enough. I follow all of my doctor's advices. And I still see a lot of doctors even though I've been in the clear for, for almost nine years. I see doctors a lot. If you feel that you can spare $1, $2, $3, $5, by all means, 
please click on the link and help support me. I'm raising the money I raise goes to them. Um, I am walking in honor and in memory of two people, uh, in honor of uh, somebody that is currently fighting, and in memory of someone that passed away that was diagnosed around the same time I was, and they didn't make it through their first year of treatment. And that was really hard for me because I, they were my friend, they were going through it. They calmed my parents down. <laughs> they calmed my parents down. Um, yeah. So, sorry. Uh, you can probably read more of my story if you click on that link. And, um, and I'll share more when I can compose myself. But that is something I'm in training for right now. Me and Penny have been walking. I usually do the walk, but I don't do the smaller walk. I do the I do the 5K, but I usually walk it. Uh, but since we walk uh, at least twice a day, I'm in training. I have actually started jogging while walking Penny. And she's good for that because she walks very fast. <laughs> so enough of that for now. I hope you guys are having a fabulous spring day. We did have a Mother's Day in the States here on Sunday yesterday, which is why I am behind on all of my videos. I got to spend the whole morning with my mom, my dad, my siblings, and my nieces. And it was very heartwarming, nice, laid back, and just relaxing. And I hope you had some relaxing time this weekend as well. Thanks again for checking in, tuning in, and I appreciate and I'm grateful for each and every one of you who watch my channel. So thanks a lot. Hopefully I'll have something to show you the next video. And I am also working on a tutorial or like a sew along, not a tutorial, a sew along. I don't think I'm an expert enough to tutorialize anyone. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. Mm -hmm.